like I said, I've been using no cheap tricks, so I'm going to take the nose off. Many kids, once they learn to talk at a young, tender age, form a response to one of the most frequently used words in the, not only the English language, but all languages that I know, and that word is, no, 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 no. That's how most parents say it. And kids form a natural response to that. Why not? So my speech is about different why not activities that I've had as a child that have resulted in a lot of learning and some different experiences. And the first one was when I just started to learn how to walk in the front yard and I'm walking around and I spot this beautiful bumblebee. And I thought, well, he's furry. And I had pets at the time, but I knew that pets, you're supposed to pet. That's why they call them pets. And so I petted that bumblebee. <laughs> The bumblebee stung me, and I thought to myself, oh, shame on you, bumblebee. Stick me once, shame on you. Stick me <laughs> twice, and I must be dense. <laughs> well, it gets better. I'm flying a bobby pet around the living room in the house, and I'm thinking it's a World War II plane, and I'm looking for a place to land. And sure enough, I find myself a wall socket that looks just like a hanger. And at that time, I stuck it in, and at that time, I discovered electricity. But, you know, probably not the way Ben Franklin did. And when I got older, I had a real appreciation for these little plastic socket protectors they make to keep kids safe nowadays. But it gets better. I, too, went to the supermarket with my mother several times as a child, and my older sisters were in kindergarten and in first grade, and since they were having a formal education, I thought it was time for me to start learning as well. No need for the learning to wait, right? And so I'm on the way back from the supermarket, and I said, hmm, I wonder if a car door that's locked will open from the inside. Well, in retrospect, this little experiment could have used or benefited from a little more planning because I probably should have done the test with the car at rest. But what I did learn is that a car door on a car in motion will itself become in motion when going around a corner very fast. And so as the song goes, I did see the world move under my feet, but Mama got so bad she nearly had a heart attack and that really put the kibosh on any further experimentation involving motor vehicles until my teenage years. But that's probably a story for another day. <laughs> this was not so much a why not, is this is something that there's nothing that could have prepared me for this experience. I mean, nothing. And this is the birds of the bees. And I'm not talking about the kind of bumbly bees that sting you. I'm talking about the ones that bring babies. And the birds and the bees, if you guys think that storks bring babies, you better cover your ears or maybe leave the room. Don't want to burst anyone's bubble. But Bob sat us down with a book and I was five, my sisters were six and seven, and this book was called Where Babies Come From. Have anybody seen that one before with paper mation people and dogs on top of one another? And, oh, and my sisters and I couldn't even make it through a half a page of narration without bursting into uncontrollable fits of laughter. I am not kidding. So I started thinking about that. Maybe mom and dad got that book about nine months before my oldest sister was born. And boy, they must have studied it hard because there's only a year between my next sister and me. So I thought, hey, some people say marriage doesn't come with an instruction manual. I think my parents found it, okay? <laughs> but the worst part of that whole experience, the very worst part of that experience was that going to church after that was never, ever the same, okay? <laughs> because I was sitting in church and I would look around at all the people in the pews and I'd say to myself, I know how they got here. <laughs> I do. And it was hard enough to make it through an hour of mass without laughing, looking at my sisters, looking at each other, you know, passing those glances back and forth and you're not supposed to laugh. So after that, I just thought, well, you know, I gotta be careful about what I learn and, and why not maybe take a different learning track about the birds and the bees. <coughs> Well, if I fast forward to the near present, that gets me to the why not Toastmasters part of the speech. And I remember being in this very room about 16 to 18 months ago, came here as a guest, then thought to myself, why not join Toastmasters? So I did, I joined Toastmasters. And 
after a while, I thought to myself, well, you know, why not volunteer and serve the club in a position of authority, a position where I could make a difference, a position of the VP of Public Relations. The VP. That stands for vice president, you know. Mama always said I'd get into politics, and Mama always known best. <laughs> but I'll leave you with this one party thought. I'm directing this mostly at you generous, very nice, very impressionable, humorous contest judges. If it might not be too bold for me to request, why not vote me through to the area contest? <laughs>